Hi guys, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I will show you how to install MSI Afterburner and how to use it to display in-game important system parameters such as CPU temperature and frequencies, RAM usage, and others. Afterburner has many features and functionalities, many of them used by very advanced users. Since it is a video for beginners and specifically focused on how to monitor your system performance during gaming, I will show you mainly simple but practical things. I will show you quickly where to download and how to install the application. Simple user interface adjustments. How to enable the overlay or the on-screen display. How to choose what to monitor. How to customize the overlay, including the size and position. And how to enable real-time frame rate recording. It is very important to download Afterburner from a reliable source. I recommend the official MSI website. I will put the link in the description. The installation process is very straightforward. You run the downloaded file, read and accept the license agreement, and then it is important to select both MSI Afterburner and Riva Tuner Statistics Server. I will explain what the second one does later in this video. Then you choose a storage location, whether you want shortcuts, and start the installation. Immediately after the Afterburner installation, the next step will be to install Riva Tuner Statistics Server. The setup program will pop up automatically. You need to choose a language, read and accept the license agreement, choose a location, manage the shortcuts, and start the installation. This is Afterburner after the installation. Yours may look different because there are many visual templates, and sometimes they change the default one. This one shows the GPU frequencies, voltage, if it is enabled, and the current GPU temperature. You can also adjust the voltage, again, if it is enabled, and also if the GPU allows it. You can also overclock or downclock the GPU core and memory frequency. You can change the power and temperature limit if the video driver and the GPU allow such adjustment. A nice feature you can see here is that you can set a specific speed for the GPU fans and also save different profiles. I will show you some very simple ways to customize the user interface. You need to press the settings button and that will open the afterburner properties. If you go to the tab called User Interface, you will find options for changing the transparency of the program and the more useful one, to change the size. At higher screen resolutions, especially 4K and above, the default size is too small. Here you can also change the default template, or skin as they call it. You can pick whatever you like. I will set mine to another one, because I am more used to it. In this case I can see a graphical presentation of different stats and performance factors. But this video is about monitoring this in-game, so now we are ready to start setting the in-game overlay. For this, you need to go to the Monitor tab. Here you can see different parameters we can set to watch. For each of those you want to see in-game, you need to check Show an on-screen display. Now in the Properties column, you can see that InOSD was added. When you do this for the first time, the Riva Tuner Statistics server will start most probably minimized by default. So check your taskbar. From now on, I will call it Riva Tuner. This program has many features, but right now for us, it is important that it can control the size, the position, and the visual appearance of the on-screen display. Let me first quickly activate what I usually like to monitor, and then I will show you what the stats look like in-game. Now we are in Forza Horizon 5 but we don't see any stats. This is because they are turned off by default. So we need to go back to Riva Tuner and turn them on. And now you can see the stats at the upper right corner of the screen. This is the default size and position. You may want to change it according to your needs. For example, I want it to be at the center of the screen and 50 pixels from the top. These values depend on your current resolution. I am using 4K, so I need that big horizontal value. I also want to make it bigger because the default size is too small for that resolution. And I will add a background for better visibility. Now if we go back to the game, we can check the result. It's not bad. We see all the GPU, CPU, and RAM stats I have selected. But some things are missing. If we go back to the Afterburner settings, you can see that I have also selected minimum frame rate, average frame rate, and 1% lows. But now we see only the current frame rate, which is not what we want. To enable these additional frame rate stats, we need to go to the Benchmark tab and set a hotkey for recording and logging the results. When you press the hotkey, you will now see all the missing stats. 
But now we have another problem. We don't know what exactly each of those frame rate stats represents. Which one is the average frame rate, which one is 1% low, and so on. One way to solve this is to go back to the Monitoring tab in Afterburner settings. Select one of the unnamed stats and scroll down till you find the override group name. Check it and change the default name to something that better describes the stat. Press Apply and do the same with the others. When you go back to the game, things will look much better. If you want to reset the stats, just press the benchmark hotkey we set earlier. Now the average frame rate is reset and will calculate according to the frame rates from this point. You can easily change many layout properties such as the size and the color of the characters, group colors, the alignment of the elements, graph sizes, and many others. You can also choose one of the available pre-made layouts. There are many options for customization, but I will not go into more detail in this video. There is also a way to build a custom layout from scratch by manually creating text and visual elements. This is a custom layout I have built for my videos. I like it because it shows exactly what I need. It is informative and it is not too distracting. If you want me to make a separate video on how to create custom layouts like this, leave a comment below. If this video was helpful to you, please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.